coming up next on Business Minds Coffee Chat. Spend time in the morning with a reflection or meditation. I like to pray in the morning, just kind of get my mind ready and just think about like, first, I'm so thankful for what I have today. I'm so grateful for today. And then thinking like, what do we really, where are we going? Where's that 10 year goal? Where's that five? Where, where's that long term? Where, why are we doing what we're doing today? And so that realignment of the why behind what I do is really important to, I think, have that energy. So kind of what you said, it's like not every day you wake up like, let's go, come on. Right. But you kind of like that, that reminder, it's like doing those little things and that reminder, like I am so, so thankful to be where I'm at today. And I really appreciate everybody that's in my life. And sometimes just remembering that is just enough to be like, okay, I'm thankful now because I have these things, because I'm grateful for the people around me. Like, all right, now I'm kind of like, I got to keep moving. Like, let's just keep going. So there's good and bad days for everybody, I think. The fact that you're listening to this podcast tells me that you're someone who values their time and is interested in improvement and growth. I've learned over the years that those who want to get better, who want to sharpen their skills, hire coaches. I started my coaching business because I saw firsthand how having the right coach transformed a family member's business and life. This had a profound impact on me, and it's my mission to help others have a similar positive experience. If you've ever thought about hiring a business coach, check this out. Working with me as your coach, you'll gain more clarity on your goals and priorities, be held accountable, learn and apply the tools to maximize your potential, build a rock-solid foundation for your business, and achieve the results and success you deserve. Warren Buffett said, The best investment you can make is in yourself. If you're ready to commit to your personal and professional development, let nothing hold you back. To apply to my coaching program and to schedule a call with me to learn more, just visit jshearbusinessconsulting.com and click the Book Now button at the top. I look forward to hearing from you. And now, enjoy the latest episode. Hey, this is Eric Libby, founder and CEO of The To-Do Dudes, and you're listening to Business Minds Coffee Chat with Jay Shear. This is Business Minds Coffee Chat, where those interested in personal and professional growth come to listen to and learn from extraordinary business leaders, thought leaders, best-selling authors, renowned psychologists, neuroscientists, and others who are changing the world through the work they do. I'm your host, Jay Shear. Welcome to the conversation. My guest in the studio with me is an entrepreneur, the founder and CEO of the To Do Dudes, and a challenger of human limits. I love that. With core values such as accountability, leadership, community, growth mindset, and positivity, he founded his company on a mission to provide a helping hand to the neighbors of our community with a smile while empowering the next generation of leaders, their dudes, by advancing their personal and professional skills. Please welcome Eric Libby. Eric, it is great to see you. Thank you for being here, my man. I appreciate it, Jay. No, that was that was perfect. I really appreciate that. Absolutely. Super excited to be here. Let's have some fun today. Yeah, we are definitely going to do that. <laughs> so, Eric, I thought a good starting point would be for you to share with all of us what your favorite thing is about yourself and why. Favorite thing about myself. I would have to say the commitment to... I think my word, something that's really important, I think the value of when you make a promise to someone, I mean, like you said, with the core values element, accountability. So anytime, and I've learned lessons in my past where it's like when you don't, when you give someone your word and you don't follow through, that is a painful feeling. So I think one thing that I really appreciate appreciate about myself is just when I commit to something, I will get it done and I will make sure to communicate that I will get it done for that person. Mm, uh, yeah, that's yeah. fantastic. I love that. And I also, like you, live by that as as a guiding principle as well. But to the point that you just mentioned that you know sometimes we fall short on that and right. we learn some valuable lessons through that process. So speaking of a lesson, what was one lesson that you learned when you didn't live that principle for sure one 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 that immediately comes to mind it was i think maybe i was probably seventh grade of the at that time and there was something that that happened i can't remember the direct occur or the the exact occurrence but it was 
something I promised my dad that I didn't do. It was something like something at home and I did something and just realized quickly after I didn't stay true to my word to him. And that feeling, it wasn't like I am mad at you, like kind of a yelling thing from my dad, but it was, well, I'm really disappointed that you didn't tell me the truth on that specific thing. Like I, I trusted you. I put it, I put my faith in you and I didn't come through. And that was that feeling of guilt. I mean, those, especially those lessons you learn early on in life are the ones that really stick with you hard. So, I mean, I think my parents taught me great lessons on that and just really try with whoever I'm working with just to follow through. And if I say something, I will do it because that I remember that feeling was a painful feeling when I let my dad down like that. Ooh, yeah, that's, uh, you know, that that feeling that we have inside, that feeling of 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 shame or just just remorse, whatever that that pain is that we feel, mm. that is powerful, yeah. right? I mean, that's a re- constant reminder of us to make sure that we're following right. through and doing the things that we say we're going to do. So, you know, I'm curious, speaking of your your parents, you know, so that was something that you felt or had a conversation with your father around. What is one of the most valuable lessons that you learned from your mother? From my mom. Okay. I would say probably just the element of like growth mindset, keep getting better is there's always room for improvement in anything you do. So she is a go-getter. She's a realtor in the area here, always looking for that next opportunity, but just always encouraging us to try new things and like push our limits. So like today is not who you're going to be. You got to keep growing, keep pursuing that better self, that growth mindset. And so I think always as a kid, my, my mom encouraged both my brother and I just keep experimenting, doing new things, but keep trying to grow yourself, your, your skill set, learning new things, whether it be sports, business, and just being so supportive on that journey, whether we fail or not at the end of the day, she's still loving us despite those, those failures, those fallbacks, but it's just that keep moving forward. You will fall down, but keep, get back up, keep going. Mm, Wow. That's, that's an amazing mindset to have. So have you read the book mindset by Carol Dweck? I haven't. No, uh, it's is that a good book. Yeah, it's an outstanding okay. book. So it really talks about the two primary mindsets, if you will, a yeah. fixed mindset and a growth mindset. Right. And so it, it really is. There's a lot of science in that book behind that, but it, it's a great book to read, and I think it's something that you would truly it, appreciate. And if I can add on, Jay, please. I, I, with that, like you said, growth mindset, fixed mindset. Like there, I've heard that in many books or podcasts and stuff. It's if you are stagnant and you're not developing to that next point, like I feel like that's the point of life. It's like learning and growing and keep keep refining your being to the next level. It's like we go through little levels and stages of life. And so if it's fixed, it's like you're not going anywhere. It's not – you can't find that deeper sense of fulfillment like we're just stagnant. Like this life is meant to be enjoyed. We're meant to have so many gifts while we're here. And so – Kind of, un- I'd love to. You have to remind me of that book after the podcast here, but um, yeah, it's just that growth mindset is huge. Yeah, for sure. it, it it most definitely is. So you know, along those same lines, or along that 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 thread of of having a growth mindset and always looking to to learn and to grow and to improve. As you think about your business the way it is today and the vision that you have for that business tomorrow and in the years to come, what who do you need to grow into? What type of person do you need to become? What skill sets do you think that you need to acquire to be the person who can wow. – who can lead that business <laughs> right. that you have the vision of. That's that's really good, yeah. Um, first one, immediately, we are in the people business. I'd say leadership, huge. Is just, I've made so many mistakes over these past three and a half years. Is I mean, whether it be committing to a customer or not delivering on that promise or maybe trying to sell the vision too big and then the team's like, well, what exactly? Like, we're, we're trying to move forward here. So it's like, these little lessons I've learned on the, on the way it's we're in the people business. Leadership is critical in that. I think, I think too, because I'm 21 years old right now, there's just so much about management structure, business structure, like how to build systems to create and scale. So I think like for all of us, not even just myself, like our admin team at the to do dudes, it's, it's like, we are just getting this for the first time ever. We have no experience. So it's, it's kind of going to almost like a, Christopher Columbus exploring America. Like we are doing this for the first time. We've never been in this territory. So trying to just pick, pick it up and, and get advice from mentors, advisors. And it's like, how do we learn these skills? So I'd say those are the, probably the big ones. It's just 
learning the game, honestly, and the leadership principles that because we're in the people's business, that is so important to what we do. Yeah, that's that's a powerful thing that uh, that you just said. It's also good that you have the awareness to recognize that, right? Because there are so many leaders out there, so many business owners and leaders who don't have that self-awareness to realize that here are some of the gaps that I have, right, as a leader or that we have as a business that we need to work on, right? Because that is kind of going back to improvement and always learning. We have to know the areas we need to learn in order to improve. Right. So let's, let's stay on the, the topic of leadership for just a couple of moments here. And I want to talk about self-leadership because in my view and all the clients that I've worked with and the, the world that I operate in, my belief is, is that the best leaders are incredible at leading themselves first, right? They have to know how to lead themselves sure. before they can truly lead others. So let's speak about self-leadership. What does that mean to you when you hear that term? And let's explore that a little bit. And I'd love to find out some of the ways that you focus on leading yourself. Right. So the first thing, I mean, you've probably heard in a lot of places, but leading by example. So I have to be able to, from my team, I have to first do it myself. So kind of your question, leadership or self-leadership. I think back to one of my biggest core values, accountability is mentally, I have to really prepare myself going into a day, like really saying like, okay, if I'm going to, if I have a list of stuff I need to get done, I need to make sure I stay on top of that. It starts early in the morning. Like the first thing you do in the day, do not snooze your alarm clock. Like the, the little, I believe firmly, the, the little decisions impact the bigger scale of what's going on. So yeah, for sure. It starts with yourself, but I think it's just doing those small things, w- being able to lead by example, which then, I mean, to the team, if they can have somebody to look to in those times of like, all right, what are we, we don't know what to do, what's going on. Like at some, sometimes there is a, a cloud over the vision of where you're going as a company. But like, if you have somebody to look to, and if I remain committed to at least what I've stayed committed to myself on, that's helpful, I think, to the team that we're leading as well. So let's talk then about how you start the day and how you end the day. So give us some – let's kind of pull back the curtain a little bit and talk about – those habits that you have. I watched some of the videos that you create, and I would encourage all of you listening right now to check (laughs) out and follow Eric and watch some of these amazing videos. But speak to those habits that you've built that set you up for success. So let's go deep on that. For sure. What time do you wake up in the morning? How do you start the day? Do you always come to the day with, you know, a super positive attitude or, you know, is it sometimes, holy cow, you know, now what am I going to do? Right. No, that's a great question. And so... First I'll say is I like to run almost experiments with myself sometimes where I'll wake up really early in the morning, do that for a couple of weeks and test like, okay, do I have more energy? Am I able to get through the day with more impact? Am I able to speak better, think clearer? So at least right now, and it's been in refinement for years, for the past couple of years, but at least right now, start my day, I wake up at four, usually go right into a workout at about 4.15, 4.30. So the first thing to start the day, Again, it's like the little things, but it's start with a sweat. So immediately I'm, I'm reinforcing to myself, I can do the difficult things. So starting with the sweat, doing a uh, 5K or a, I mean, a, a row workout, something like that. I'll go uh, take a shower, do a cold shower. So it's like, again, trying to reinforce those habits. And then usually I just jump right into work. So go usually until, I mean, I'd say I spend most of my time working, but go into the evening and I try and cut it off with just a finished reflection. So I'll, I'll do a daily reflection of like, okay, what did we get done today? Kind of like seeing that 5,000 foot view, which is really important. So you can have your head down and grind, but you may be going the wrong direction, which that's kind of that end of day reflection is that good course correction for me. So you like to end that way. I finish my day usually around six, six thirty, and then try and be in bed by like eight thirty or so. So I'm ready to go. For the next day, and, and of course, in there, one thing I didn't didn't mention was spend time in the morning with a reflection or meditation. I like to pray in the morning, just kind of get my mind ready, and just think about like first, I'm so thankful for what I have today. I'm so grateful for today, and then thinking like, what do we really? Where are we going? Where's that ten year goal? Where's that five? Where, where's that long term? Where? Why are we doing what we're doing today? And so, 
that realignment of the why behind what I do is really important to, I think, have that energy. So kind of what you said, it's like not every day you wake up like, let's go, come on, right? But you kind of like that that reminder, it's like doing those little things and that reminder like, I am so, so thankful to be where I'm at today and I really appreciate everybody that's in my life and sometimes just remembering that is just enough to be like, okay, I'm thankful now because I have these things, because I'm grateful for the people around me, like, all right, now I'm kind of like, I got to keep moving. Like, let's just keep going. So there's good and bad days for everybody, I think. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I, I, I love that. So that gratitude practice, does that come before you actually do the workout or is it the workout first thing in the morning at 4.15 and then shower and then gratitude? What is the order? The order? The so logical order. At least order right here. now. And like I said, it, it changes a little bit, but mm-hmm. at least right now. I'll wake up right away, go into a workout and I'll come back. And like, after I'm like sweating, I'll like kind of take, that's like, all right, I'm like burning high and I need to like, all right, let's slow it down a little bit. And then I take about 10, 15 minutes. Usually go sit on my patio outside. I love to be outside. That's a big one for me is love to take that time outside. And then I just kind of sit in silence and just listen. Like I just try and listen and, and, and take about 10, 15 minutes. And then I go into right after I'll that's kind of like my stop. Then I'll go into a, a cold shower and then get into my work day after that. All right. I love that. <laughs> so for those of you that are listening right now, you know, you're know you hearing two guys right here that get up at 4 o'clock, 4.15 in the morning. That does not mean that you need to do that yourself, mm-hmm. but it is a great practice. And I think the main thing is, the main takeaway that I have from this part of the conversation is the value of doing hard things first thing in the morning, whatever the first thing in the morning looks like for you, but doing hard things and why that's important, right? There's a psychological component to that. There's a physical component to that, but that really does set you up for what the rest of the day is going to look like. And my belief has been, and this has been through experience and those that I coach, that when we can win the morning, we can win the day, right? When we can win the day, we can win the week. When we can win the week, we win the month, et cetera, et cetera. So it all builds upon itself, right? You know, we've been talking about, you know, your morning routine, the things you do in the evening. We've talked about leadership, self-leadership. I'm curious, as you continue to grow and evolve in your own business and grow your own leadership skills, talk for a moment about the importance of having difficult conversations. So with your own dudes that you have within your organization, speak to what it's like to address difficult things right. that come up in the business. I mean, we're t- you know, you t- already mentioned that you're in the people business, right? When right. we're in the people business, which all of us are to a degree, you know, we have to confront things that don't always go well. So how do you handle that yourself? That's a gr- yeah, that's a great uh, question for sure. So there's first I'll, I'll start with this is there's a podcast I really like to listen to called his name is Alex Hermosa and he talks about you being just a few difficult conversations from the life you really want to have. So I'm a big believer in that something that I've had to get better at with time. So I think when I first started the business, having those difficult conversations was very difficult because I treated coworkers more as like friends, right? And it's tough to, when you're in a business environment to set that boundary of like, okay, like these are the expectations. And I think kind of at the beginning, it was just kind of like, okay, well, this is kind of what's expected, kind of do your thing. And I will kind of be in my area, right? Like quickly realize, like for some that will work, but for some, if you don't set those clear expectations, a difficult conversation is around the corner. So kind of where I'm going with this is to, to, to get to that difficult conversation first, set the clear expectations because then when you get there, it's not like what happened to all this? Like it's, it's two people communication wise are on, on complete different ends of the spectrum. But if you lay out clear expectations, this is what we're looking for. This is what I expect of you. Then once you get to the difficult conversations, like, well, we laid all this out. We had several follow-up conversations, but the worst thing is when you sweep it under the rug and don't address it, then it's like that difficult conversation as time elapses just gets more and more and more difficult. If you just, if you want to look the other way, which I've done several times, but it always comes back. So it's like, at least my philosophy is like, if something is not how it should be, address it right away, like address it. And you'll find you're, you're typically not too far off with the other person. You just have to communicate to get back on the same page. But 
the longer you let it go, that's when it that's when it goes downhill. Yeah, that is so true. It can definitely snowball and typically will if you don't address it. Yeah. And I love the fact that you mentioned that there are specific expectations, right, that you define with, I'm sure there are metrics assigned to yeah. that, right? So when we decide we're going to do something, we know what the measure of success is for that thing, whatever it is we're doing. Right. And you have upfront agreement. Right on that, and you can then hold the person accountable. Exactly. Now, when something doesn't go well, talk about who ultimately owns that. Clarify a little bit more. What so, you- let's say as an example that you set an expectation, and something doesn't go well with that expectation, gotcha. or something doesn't go well in itself. Right? Who owns it? Right. Okay. I completely see where you're going with that now. So. If I don't set the clear expectations, it's my responsibility. Boom. Yes, the, it is. At the very top of the organization, I for anything that goes wrong, if I'm to point fingers at somebody, it's my, it's my fault. I'm the one who put them in the position. I'm the one that hired them, got gave, like set them up where they need to be and, and should have laid out clear expectations. If they're not delivering, yeah, that's a that's an obvious failure on my end. Yeah, I see where you're going with that now. That's 100%. Well, that, that. That, that's a huge yeah. one, and that's also a blind spot that we often see is that the owner of a business or, let's say, somebody who's in a management position doesn't take ownership right. of communication, doesn't take ownership when things fall apart. The reality is is that when you're the one in charge, you own everything. Right. And if someone did not – if someone fell short of the expectations – we have to look at our own communication style and say, what did I miss here, right? Where is the area of improvement? Right. Where did I fall short on communicating what those expectations were? Maybe I wasn't clear enough. Was Maybe I wasn't direct enough. Right. Maybe I made assumptions that I shouldn't have made, right? right? But we always, I mean, one of the biggest growth opportunities for anyone in leadership is recognizing those areas where we can get better in our leadership right. roles and get better communicating. Yeah, and what I'll say too on that point is when you are working with team members and if if for, I'm going to point fingers and, and say this is you did this wrong, it's all your responsibility, first of all, that doesn't help anything because then it's like they don't feel the support. Like I'm there like, okay, like the, the, the right approach is going in there like, all right, we made a mistake here. How can we solve this? Like, let's work together to figure out to make sure that this cannot happen again. If if I'm if my way of solving a problem is pointing at someone, that's going to slow things down tremendously. And then team members won't feel that they have the support they need to be successful at the role. Because at the end of the day, most if someone comes to work a job, they want they want to do what sets them up for success. And if you don't allow that, or you point fingers, and it's like. You just have a bunch of resentful employees that don't really want to do, don't really want to help grow the mission of what we stand for. So it's a big thing. Yeah, I, I completely agree. It's you have to take ownership responsibility at the, from the very top of the organization. Yep. No, no question yeah. about it. No question about it. So what is one of the greatest challenges that you've faced thus far in life? It could be a life challenge, a business challenge, but what what is one of the greatest challenges you faced and what did you learn about yourself through that challenge? Yeah, I'd say maybe two and maybe they kind of correlate a little bit. I'd say first one is when I was, and I tell this to my team a lot because trying to reinforce the mission of you can get better at something if you just put in the time and practice. When I was in, let's say, 11th grade, 12th, 11th, 12th grade, I did Daytona State. Uh, I was a dual enrollment student here in the area. And I hated public speaking. Like, I did not like the speech class. I was just, it wasn't that I was, like, a terrible speaker. I just was, like, I, my face would get all red. I'd be nervous. I wouldn't want to do it because I just didn't like to have the spotlight. And I, mean, I still would say I don't like to have the spotlight all the time, but I, I've i gotten better and refined that we're at first, it was a limited self-belief about myself that mm. I, can't, I just can't do it. And then kind of when I started to really get into business and really start changing my focus, getting really interested in reading, learning about myself back in 2020, I was like, this is a hurdle that I need to get over and I want to keep getting better at it. So I was like, I'm going to fall on my face a bunch of times to try and overcome this. So, I mean, there's... I'm, 
people close to me can say there's probably many times where, yeah, that speech probably wasn't good, so good or that public speaking event wasn't so good. But I mean, now I just see it as this is a, this is something I'd like to at some point speak to millions of people and it's a goal. It's like, all right, getting a little bit better, getting a little bit better over time. So I'd say that's one. And then two, like kind of piggybacking off of that is I think when I was ninth grade or beginning high school, I moved from Minnesota, came to Florida here, whole new friend group. Everything was new. I mean, it's all across the country and it just like everything reset. And I mean, I, I was comfortable there, which is a terror. I don't like that word at all. But I was comfortable in Minnesota. I came here and it just was something that completely like I had to, I had to grow up quickly. I had to build friendships. I was isolated. I was on my own. I was trying to kind of learn this new Floridian environment and stuff. And I would say I just, I didn't really think very highly of myself and I didn't really think that business entrepreneurship was something that I could do either. So it was, I think just like spending the time. And then I saw this challenge and I was like, I really want to beat this challenge and just like keep growing, keep getting better. So I'd say they're kind of in the same ballpark, but, um, have kind of their own little nuance there. So, you know, you've brought this up a couple of times when you, and you didn't use these exact words, but when you experience moments of self doubt, right, where you're beating yourself up or you're, you know, you've got those limiting beliefs. I can't do this. Or I, you know, I'm not the kind of person who can get up on a stage and speak in front of a thousand people, which by the way, yes, you can. But you know, when you have those thoughts, what do you do to lift yourself back up, to get yourself back into an empowered position? Wow, that's yeah, great question. Um, I think sometimes what I do is, first, I, I believe we put, like I'm saying, speaking to a thousand people or, or just something that requires a lot of, like there's a lot of pressure around you're like, okay, there's a big moment coming up. Like I think a lot of times we put way too much weight on the situation itself. So sometimes I'm almost looking like, What's the 5,000 foot view? Or imagine doing this 1,000 times. Would I still feel that way? Probably not. It's probably pretty, pretty realistic. If I did, or imagine I had to get up on a stage every single day, like multiple times in a day, that, that number time 1,000, I would not feel that same way. So I, sometimes it's almost like a, a change of just pure perspective where situation's not the different. It's, it's still happening the same way, but we put too much weight and pressure where a lot of the times it's just our mind speaking. And sometimes I think our, our mind speaking lies to us that aren't really true about ourselves, but we have this frame of reference of like putting way too much pressure or way too much weight in a situation. It's like, just need to like remove yourself a little bit and like, look at the 5,000 foot viewer, try and try and imagine thousand. What if I did this a thousand times? It wouldn't be that. I wouldn't feel that way. Yeah, no, I, I, I love that. You know, and there's a lot to be said about the way that we prepare ourselves mentally and physically before we're about to dive into something that would add that level of, of stress or maybe anxiety. So right. as an example, you know, I have the, the, the opportunity and the honor to speak to a number of, of very, well-known uh, high-level speakers who are on stages all over the world on a regular basis. And, you know, to the person, they typically talk about that that little bit of fear that's still there, even though they've done it thousands of times. But it's what they do prior to going on that stage right. that makes all the difference in the world. And I would tell you <laughs> that nine times out of ten – it is a breathing practice, mm. right? It is an exercise that they do to calm the nervous system. Right. And it's really interesting to, to hear how they go through that process. But nonetheless, I appreciate you sharing that. So I do have, you know, you, you brought this up, but you mentioned something about 2020 kind of being a pinnacle point in your life where you started to invest in yourself, right? Invest in your own growth. And you mentioned about reading as an example. So before we started recording today, you asked me a question about books and about maybe a book that I've read or a recommendation that I have had. What was one of the first books that you came across back then in 2020, let's say, that had a significant impact on you and how you show up to the world today? Right. The second book I ever read, so I'll, I'll say before 2020, I was not a reader. I was not really invested in learning. And that year I just started was like, I just really want to dive into this and just figure out and try and learn some stuff. So I remember the second book I ever read was How to Win Friends and Influence People. I've read it three times. I literally just finished it last week again. But that was one of the most monumental books to me because it's the element of asking others questions, caring deeply about the other person. It's it's relationship driven. And so i I went to school for sales. That was one of my, that was my major. And it's 
that was one of the books they also taught in sales school, but it was, it's like the element of relationship. So I think that book was so powerful in my growth, but that's just one of them. I mean, another one I'd say is uh, the power of thinking big by David Schwartz, I believe, believe, is that right? I I believe that's who it is. So that was an excellent book. Yeah. Another big one. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm fascinated with reading. I've been reading for, like I said, beginning of 2020 and I mean, I, I'm very curious. So even that book you mentioned earlier, I'm definitely gonna have to write that down and see if I can, can read that. Yeah, fantastic. Well, okay. I appreciate you sharing that. So yeah. as we are wrapping up our conversation today, I would love it, Eric, if you would share a challenge with all of us. What would you challenge our audience to do and me? Yeah. So again, to when 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 I was in high school, when I was learning public speaking, when I was trying to get better at all this stuff, the self-limiting belief, powerful. It, I think it, it, everybody has it. You look at somebody and you may think like, ah, oh, they got it all figured out. That is not the truth. That is not the truth. So I think my challenge would be first ha- challenging yourself to get outside of your comfort zone. That's the first place I always say is like challenge your, challenge your comfort zone but do the difficult thing. Get up in the morning, early morning, challenge yourself because it's like those little victories that end up equating to something way bigger. But you have to be willing to put in the time and the effort and the have the energy to just keep going. So I think my biggest challenge was like, if you don't believe in yourself, that doesn't mean you have no hope. You need to keep moving forward, keep challenging yourself, even with the small things because the small things turn into thing, to victories that are a lot bigger than just that small little thing. Mm, love that. What a, what a great challenge. Well, I know I'm going to take you up on that. <laughs> and uh, I will try to get better each and every day, and I appreciate it. And Eric, thank you so very much for joining us today on yes, Business sir. Minds Coffee Chat. Man, what a great conversation. And I can't wait to see where you continue to grow and evolve. Man, you've done some amazing things up to this point. Love watching your videos. I'm grateful for you being here today. And thank, thank you, you for sharing with all of us. Yes, definitely. Thank you, Jay. I appreciate your time today. Thank you for tuning into Business Minds Coffee Chat. Your support helps us continue to bring you amazing guests. Please share the show with a friend and subscribe and leave a review on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to podcasts. Here's to your personal and professional growth.